In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages access 56 and 57, in which we're going to be creating a split form. After watching this video, you should be able to create a split form and enter and edit data in a form. Now, in addition to the form wizard, you should be familiar with several other form creation tools. And if you look on the bottom of page access 56 or on your screen right now, here are a listing of the form creation tools. And of course, first of all, we have our form tool, which here's the icon. And of course, as you can see, here's our table here. And if you click on the form tool, it actually will create a form with one click based on the selected table or query. Then, of course, you have the form design, which will actually create a form from scratch and it allows you to do that from the form design view. And that's one of the views that we have. And then, of course, we have the blank form, which allows you to create a form from scratch in the form layout view. Then we have the form wizard, which is what we uh, used in our last video, which creates a form by answering a series of questions provided by the form wizard dialog boxes. Then we have the navigation tool, which will create a form uh, which is used to navigate or move between different areas of the database. Then we have the more forms button, and this will help you to create different types of forms. And that's going to be based on either multiple items, data sheet, split form, model dialog, pivot charts, or pivot table arrangements. And then we have the one which is inside of the more forms that we're going to be using, and that is the split form. And this is going to be a form that is going to have two panes, and which the upper pane is going to show one record at a time. And then the lower pane is actually going to be displaying a data sheet of the many records. So if we take a look now at our access database, and if we take a look at step one, it tells us that we want to go into our navigation pane over here and we want to click on the customer's table. Now we don't want to open it up, we just want to click on it. Once we click on this, we want to click on the create tab on our ribbon. Once we click on that create tab, we want to go here to our forms group and we want to click on more forms. Once we click on the more forms, we want to go here to the split forms, and that's going to be the one uh, type of form that we're going to create in this video. When we click on the split forms, it's going to go ahead and create our split form. And as we've noticed before, and as we mentioned just a second ago, it's a two-part form where the top part shows one record at a time, and the bottom part is going to show multiple records. Now, of course, if a field list uh, appears on there, you can actually go ahead and close that out. Uh, you can click the Add Existing Fields button in the Tools group on the Design tab to close the field list if it opens. Or you can click on this Close button right here and that's going to close the field list because we don't need that right now. Now the customer data appears in a split form with the top half in the layout view. Now the benefit of a split form is that the upper pane allows you to display the fields of one record in any arrangement. And then the lower pane maintains a data sheet view for the first few records. Now if you edit, sort, or filter records in the upper pane, the lower pane is automatically updated. And then of course vice versa. If you do anything in the lower pane, that's going to be affected in the upper pane as well. If we take a look at step two, and now it tells us that we want to click on the abbreviation for Missouri, or MO, in the state text box in the upper pane. So here we're going to click on this text box here. And then we're going to click on our Home tab. Once we click on the Home tab, then we're going to click the Selection button in the Sort and Filter group. And here's our Sort and Filter group, and we're going to click on the Selection button here. Once we have that, we are actually going to go ahead and click on does not equal MO or does not equal Missouri. So we're actually going to filter out uh, any records that does not equal Missouri. And when we click on that, we notice that 37 records are filtered where the state field is not equal to Missouri. So it's, if anything is in Missouri, we have now filtered those out. Now you also, in this case, need to change a value in the Jacob Allman record. And of course, that's the current record that you see that we're on here. It's customer number two. And step three 
it tells us that in the lower pane, we need to select Des Moines in the city field of the first record, which actually it's for customer number two. So we're gonna select Des Moines here, and then we're gonna edit this entry to read Dallas Center. So we're gonna change this here. So it's gonna say Dallas Center. Once we have that changed, we're gonna click any other record in the lower pane. So it doesn't matter what it is, we change that. And then we're gonna go back and click Jacob in the first record of the lower pane. So instead of Jacob Allman, we're gonna change the Jacob there. But moving from record to record automatically will save the data. So where we change this from Des Moines to Dallas Center, you'll notice that it's changed it in the upper part of the split form, and it's automatically been saved for us as well. In step four, it tells us that we now want to click the record selector for the Kristen Collins record in the lower pane. Now, of course, our record selector is this gray box that's in on the side. And the Kristen Collins is the customer number six. It's this one over here. And you want to click on the gray box, and your mouse pointer should turn to a black right pointing arrow in this case. Once we have this, we want to go and click the delete button in the records group on the home tab. So here we are in the records group, and we can click on the down pointing arrow, and we want to go to delete record. Once we have that, it's going to Microsoft Access this is going to give us a notification telling us that the record cannot be deleted or changed because uh, the, tab uh, the table sales includes related records. So we can go ahead and click on OK in this case. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, in this case, it tells us that we cannot delete this record. And the, really it because it does contain related records in the sales table. And the reason is, is that this is a benefit of referential integrity on the one-to-many relationship between the customers and sales tables. So if we would delete out this one um, record here, it's actually forbidding us to do this because there is connections that are mated, uh, that is made in there, uh, that's going to prevent that. And it's actually going to cause us to have inaccurate data. Now, referential integrity prevents the creation of what we call orphan records. And these are records on the many side of a relationship, which in this case, the sales table, that do not have a match on the one side. So on the one side, we have this customer, Kristen Collins. And Kristen has bought some items, which is now uh, those sales are recorded in the sales table. If we would delete Kristen Collins out, there's nothing on the sales table to tie it back to the customer's table, so it's just kind of left out there. So we notice that we cannot delete out that record. So if we moved on to step five and clicked on OK, we realize we can't delete this record. So continuing on with step five, we're going to right click the customer's form tab. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the close. And it's going to ask us and prompt us, do we want to save the changes to the design of the um, form customers? And in this case, we want to click on yes, we do want to save the changes. And then, of course, it's going to ask us for the form name. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and keep the name as customers. And of course, notice that we do not have a form right now as customers. So we're going to leave it as is, and we're just going to go ahead and click on OK. Once we do that, we notice that the form uh, list now has the customer's form there, and we have now created a split form. And that concludes the information that's on pages Access 56 and 57, in which we created a split form. In the next video, we're going to be using the form layout view.